Today, we're going to be talking about the toxic world of influencers. My credentials, um, I literally love an LA. And I've been a content creator for like two years now, so I know a little bit about the industry. Influencers today make their bag off of selling us a dream lifestyle, but how much of that is actually realistic? Let's dive into the toxic world of influencers. One thing that you need to realize is that most influencers are faking everything. From looks to clothes to fancy vacations, so much of it is a downright lie. And these are a lot of things that I've learned living here in LA and meeting other influencers. So you've got like an inside source. Okay, first up is fashion. I feel like I go on my For You page and everybody has better clothes than me. I'm like, if I spend too much time on my phone, I start spiraling being like, oh wow, how does it seem like everybody has better style than me? Everybody's going on constant shopping sprees. Everybody is wearing the newest and latest trends. People are wearing designer. Am I behind? Like, what am I doing wrong? Then I had some secrets exposed to me. Most influencers do not own the shit that they are wearing. I have seen setups where a brand will allow a content creator to do a photo shoot in their products but require that they be shipped back so the influencer gets the benefit of having cool photos and cool clothes and the brand gets the benefit of having exposure or possibly content for them to use but the influencer never bought the pieces. On that note, one time I was working on a film set for Disney and the costume designer was like, please keep all the tags on everything. And I thought it was so strange. So I asked her why and she was like, <laughs> At the end of the shoot, I try to return as many items as possible to stretch the budget. And I realized like everything in the influencer world in Hollywood, it's so fabricated and fake. This is one trick I learned because I started working as a producer way back when. I literally bought a re-tagging gun. I would take tags off of clothes for photo shoots and then I got a re-tagging gun and I would literally re-tag on tags after the photo shoot to send these clothes right back to where they came from. I saw in the newest season of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, the big drama is that one of the housewives is about to be banned from Nordstrom for returning too many items. <laughs> like it's such a problem now that brands keep a roster of frequent returners because that's what bitches do. They buy a bunch of high-end shit, take pictures, don't ever, ever, ever feel bad about not being dripped out in the newest shit from Nordstrom's. On that note, around the country, you might have Rent the Runway, you might have Newly, and other short-term clothing rental services. But in major cities like Los Angeles, New York City, influencer hubs, we have like elite clothing rental companies. Like if you've ever heard of Shop Dress Pickle, their ads have been all over my social media, but they offer like really niche, really sexy, trendy, hot girl designer outfits that you can get literally the day of. They have the same thing with designer purses and shoes and sunglasses. So I could be decked out in a $10,000 outfit that I pay $200 to wear. And I'm only wearing it on a red carpet because I only need it for that night. I mean, I'm all for this because it's sustainable and we're not filling our closets with random junk we only wear once, you know how it be. But I just wanna tell you the truth of what's really going on. Next, I wanna cover the beauty standards of the influencer world because these are ridiculous and as an average consumer, it is so easy to get caught up in the what the fuck am I actually ugly scroll. The first thing to realize, is that the editing is actually out of control. Yeah, yeah, we've heard of Facetune. One of the biggest things I think is that when you have not met somebody on your screen in person, you have no idea how much Photoshop they're using. If I meet somebody at a party and I think that they look a certain way, I will swear every single time I've gone on their social media and been like, who is this? But I follow so many creators that I see every day on my For You page and I just assume they look that way. No, sweetie, no, no, it's not. There is such a disparity because the editing is so out of control. Like, did you know that not only can you facetune photos, but you can also facetune videos? And people have gotten so smart about it. Now they've developed ways to make it so that the sides of the wall don't get warped so you can't clock them for cinching in their waist. Girl, what? That is high end technology. And with AI coming on, I can't even imagine what's next. But not only are they photoshopping, most people you see on camera also have plastic 
surgery. And I'm not one to judge for that. I mean, <laughs> case in point right here. Just what's shocking is the degree. I think I'll see somebody and I'll be like, oh, she probably has a boob job. But then you'll get to know someone and you'll realize that not only is there a boob job at play, there's a chin implant and a nose job and lip filler and Botox and hair extensions and veneers and a fake tan and cool sculpting and masseter Botox and threads and liposuction and literally anything that you could imagine is going on and if it's tastefully done you would have no fucking idea and you don't know the person in real life you will never have a clue on top of getting the plastic surgery is the access to plastic surgery that influencers have i think to most people plastic surgery is expensive and it's like a big decision like oh my god do i want to change my body forever that's like some plastic surgeries can cost tens of thousands of dollars that is a big deal for most people I even think it's a big deal for influencers, but the thing is, is that a lot of your faves are getting it for free. One of my favorite examples of this is Peak Plastics. Now, Peak Plastics, I'm like cracking up at this because <laughs> this is so absurd to me. Peak Plastics is a surgeon in Utah that is like giving out boob jobs like they're fucking candy to influencers. And there's like entire Reddit threads talking about another day, another body watched peak plastics boob job <laughs> because they look like they're big they're big you know what it's giving it's giving the surgeons who put you under and then you wake up with three times the size you asked for it that is what peak plastics is is this defamation Ooh, allegedly allegedly these are my opinions in my opinion this was distasteful <laughs> okay don't mind me that was my opinion okay in my opinion the work I have seen from Peak Plastics is a little tacky, and the fact that they are giving it to influencers for free is hilarious, okay? Okay? But don't feel bad about yourself, because not only are they getting these surgeries done, they're getting them done for fucking free. And I'll tell you, I think I've only paid for my lips once out of four times. And I'm so fucking thankful every time. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to Timeless Med Spa in Denver for taking care of me. If you are based in Denver, my girls, Callie and Brooke at Timeless Med Spa are my favorite. They are my favorite. Next up is the concept of fake luxury vacations. Okay, did you know that in LA, you can book a mansion on Pier Space for one hour for $100? That's right, for the cost of $100 a week, you can hop in there with your boys, batch out five days of content, and lie to the entire internet saying that you live in a mansion. Isn't that crazy? I bet half these course bros are lying to you, posted up in a fake mansion that they don't own trying to tell you what you need to do to live like them. It doesn't end there though, because you can also rent out Ferraris for like 99 bucks an hour. You can do photo shoots with cars for a couple dollars. You could literally go to Rodeo Drive and walk up to one of the luxury vehicles just parked on the street and probably dupe people into thinking it's yours. And don't even get me started on the fucking private rental jet. There is an old set of a jet that people use in film and TV, but recently influencers have been renting it to act like they are on a luxury private jet. They do photo shoots. It's the classic stupid picture of them like looking out the window like this, trying to act like they're on a private jet. Or it's like the Andrew Tate with like the dinner sitting there of the jet being like, by my course because I'm on a private jet that I split with 50 of my closest friends, so I only had to pay $5. The last thing I want to touch on is the amount of bot followers and engagement right now is so through the roof. I think people here just buy themselves 10,000 followers off the bat because everybody here is acting, modeling, or trying to just get into a fucking party. And to get into a party in Los Angeles, you need a certain amount of followers and the people checking the guest list like don't care if it's bought it or not so everybody here just like goes and does a couple photo shoots very aesthetic slaps on 10,000 followers if they're feeling crazy they buy the verified badge and they call it a day so you can literally make yourself an influencer in like a day you could literally bought yourself 10,000 followers and go do a couple professional photo shoots and start calling yourself an influencer tomorrow and that's just the fakeness of the influencer industry. I've even seen people say like, oh, so-and-so is getting canceled. Let's watch her follower count. But then that influencer will go buy followers so it doesn't look as dramatic. So people lay off the cancellation. <laughs> My next influencer grievance is that 
These people live in a literal, beautiful, magical bubble. The biggest criticism we see with influencers is that typically they start out at like a normal nine to five job or they're students or they're stay at home moms. And we follow them because we love their lifestyle. They're super down to earth. They always have a new fun, crazy story or something going on with their life. And then they blow up on social media and they quit their job. They drop out of school and they start grinding content full time and it's awesome. But then all of a sudden these people start losing touch with reality. They stop having normal experiences with like normal peers because they're just in their house all day. I'm guilty of this too. Like there's literally not a reason to leave and interact with other people. So I think a lot of the times like influencers will just become hermit crabs with no outside world. The most iconic influencer gripe is I literally just got off work and it's 515. Try being an influencer for a day. That was such a bad Nikayla Nagura impression. I'll go hang my hat. Good night. Good night, folks. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm such a goob. But influencers will legitimately come on the For You page and be like, this is such hard work. And you people with normal nine to fives, you people in the coal mines, you just don't get how hard it is. You don't get it. But the thing is, in my experience, there is a lot of time put into this. Like, honestly, I am working all day, every day. But the difference is, is that one, I'm working for myself. I remember having a manager, having coworkers, having times to clock in and clock out and times to go here and say that. And even though I was working less, it was not my passion. And I love not having to answer to anyone. I remember how much I fucking hated my coworker. I remember a manager that I just could not stand. And not having that makes my life substantially better. Even Hassan Abi got online one day and was like, oh, it's so hard being an influencer because like my social batteries burnt out and everybody was like, bro, you can think that, but do not be saying that in front of people who work normal ass jobs, especially people with jobs in which you do not know what they are. Like I would feel so bad complaining about my shit to someone who works in the service industry, especially when you're Hassan Abi who makes like millions of dollars a year, especially when you're Michaela who also makes multi millions a year. Like <laughs> if you're making a normal salary, normal complaints, Girl, you are creating generational wealth from your bedroom. Just tune it down a little bit. Just tune it down a little bit. Another way influencers have kind of become a parasite is through the massive amounts of overconsumption. Like it actually drives me nuts that a lot of these people are making well over six figures, but then they'll come on their page and do a Shein haul, like a 70 piece Shein haul that they weren't, like you weren't even sponsored by Shein to do that. You just on your own accord decided to buy 150 pieces off Shein. And then you're telling other people to go do the fucking same because you have a code. That is so wild to me. Or the fact that there are influencers who their whole entire grift is Amazon storefront. I know a girl who every single day she posts five new outfits from Amazon and she tries them all on herself. And I strongly doubt that she's shipping all of them back to Amazon. I think she's on like a stipend with Amazon where they give her a certain amount of money to buy random outfits from their store each month. And that's all she does. But do you know how much clothing that is? Think of all the days in the year. Think of like four to five outfits a day. That's thousands of pieces. And then if she has over half a million followers that all go and buy the same pieces, Miss Girl, that's like, that's like the entire Arctic. That's gotta be like the Atlantic Ocean or something. That's wild to me, bro. Are what crazy? are you doing? Are you and I've already talked about this in my video about brain rot, but restock videos. Oh my God, Miss Girl. Just because it is Halloween does not mean you need to buy 89 different bags of Halloween candy so that you can make an aesthetic restock clear organizer drawer full of different candies. And what do you do with the extras? Where are they putting the extras? Their house is so clean. There's nowhere to put extras. Where are they hiding them? Sorry, that just like came out of nowhere. I just want to know, where are you putting the extras? When you organize your things, when you decant your juice, 
When you decant your orange juice into a new orange juice holder that's more your aesthetic, what do you do with the leftover orange juice? I have questions. Are you throwing it away? Are you just gulping it there on site? Do you have an ugly, uh, like an ugly brand names fridge in the yard? What, what are you doing with the things? And I will note, I think there is obviously a level of accountability that falls on the consumer in most of these cases. Like I think most of us, over the age of 18 are smart enough to see a 1 million piece Amazon haul and say to ourselves, okay, maybe I'll save this for later. Maybe I don't need every item off this Amazon haul. Okay, this TikTok shop gadget is kind of fucking dumb. I'll scroll. So I will say there is a little bit of accountability on us as consumers to not be fucking stupid. And like I was saying, so many of these issues stem from influencers just not leading a normal life anymore. Influencers walk a really strange path where they're high earners, where most of the ones that you might recognize are typically high earners, but they also don't really have coworkers. But they're also public figures who are recognizable. So that puts them in a weird place where they like can't go out in public. So the amount of public interaction they're getting is so limited. And a lot of them also get lazy and they don't grow their interests because like, honestly, why would you? Everything is taken care of. Your job is easy, you're making money and you never have to leave your house if you don't want to. So like, why would you go to the store when you can just DoorDash groceries? Plus the store is a liability because you could get followed and bombarded. You could go to a workout class, but oh, why would you? You're so rich, you have a gym in your house, you know? It's just kind of so irregular and wild. And when I think of similar industries, I think of like celebrities or musicians, but honestly, they have huge teams surrounding them that they get to interact with every day. And when I think of people in business who are high earners, they typically have to show up to an office with a whole bunch of people. I really don't think there's been a career similar to influencing to even match any of this up to. And one last thing I want you guys to realize is that when influencers live in a bubble and sell this illusion of a dream life, it impacts everyone. So I think influencers are honestly like a fine industry. That's how we're getting entertainment. Nobody really wants to go watch a movie anymore. I'd way rather spend two hours on TikTok. So I'm grateful for content creators and the way that they give me things to watch while I take a shit. So I love influencers because that is how I take a shit. How I brush my teeth. I am even so brain rotted I've started watching in the shower. Oh, that's really bad to admit. Um, but I do think the industry is a little dark and weird. However, it is brand new and I think there's a lot of room for more positivity and improvement. So let me know what you guys think. Who are your favorite influencers and who are your least favorite influencers? Tell me about your fave scandal in the comments. I think mine's gotta be Dramageddon, obviously. Or recently, I love the TikTok girlies getting at it. I love Aspen Ovard airing out her personal drama. I even tried to hop on that, but then I chickened out and I was like, never mind, this is not my lane. I hate getting personal. That's what the members only is for. So go join. And if you don't want to do that, just subscribe because we're very close to 200,000 subscribers. How many goddamn videos do I have to keep saying this in? It's getting embarrassing. Goodness. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day. Goodbye.